Tad Blake. I'm sitting here in uh, Full Mongrel Studios, my home studio in, in Wales. Aurelian has shared the session with me, which I'm looking at now, and I'm going to start doing some prep work on it. Um, his band's called uh, Fiction Park, and uh, we're just going to see what we can do with this. This has just been imported to my template, which has all my stuff here, my drum bus and various other buses. If I need them, they're there. I can use them or get rid of them as I like. And I'm sitting here at this icon, but I'm not going to really use it. I'm taking the position that most people are going to be on a Pro Tools with their mouse, and I, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to start by, um, first off, my eyesight's bad, so I want to get things color-coded and labeled. All right, well, that's, that's a pretty cool sound. That's a great sound. I love that. It has distortion. It says it's been lo-fied. Um, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna consider that a bass. And if, as everybody know, bass is brown. Pretty obvious. What's this? Bed. What's a bed? Wow. That is a real bed, I think. An actual bed. I don't have a color for bed. I've got my lead vocal, which I'm going to process in one way. I have it set up like this for troubleshooting, really. Um, I can do any DSing I want to here on this channel. Um, and then take care of uh, vocal rides levels here. I just like to see the difference um, on the two channels. Plus, I use a lot of plugins. I do a lot of treatment. I might not end up using all of this stuff, but it's there if I need it. I get and get rid of it as I need it. But I have a feeling that I'm going to want to get this vocal up uh, and be a little bit more aggressive in the mix than they have it. Uh, a little bit more of a focus. It's gonna get you. Also because I know I'm, I'm gonna probably um, bring up some of those drums and make things a little bit more aggressive. So I'm gonna have to have the vocal up there too. The mechanical moon is gonna get you. The mechanical moon. That seems like the loudest part of the vocal. I'm gonna go ahead and build a trigger track for this because it's not really following it very well, is it? And I don't want that varying too much. I wanna keep it all kind of the same. And hopefully job done. see if I can punch that out a little bit with an expander. My H3000 is just burned up. Uh, I'm trying to get it repaired, but in the meantime, and in the meantime has been for the last about two years, I've created this little thing that does the job for me. 
So I've got a, the meta flanger here, um, which you can see is, is going quite slow. I sometimes slow it down from that. Um, and then to get the more random thing, that coupled with the mono mod, they just constantly are changing and doing funny things to the sound. And then going through the SRS, that's trying to calculate where it thinks the sound should be in surround sound, because that's what it was made for, is to put your whole stereo program material through it. Your hi-fi was to go through the SRS. And it does some pretty weird things. I love it. It's always doing something different and odd. And it has a beautiful sound. It dulls things down automatically and adds a nice low mid warmth to the sound, which I love for reverbs and things like this. So you'll see me, I'll probably put reverb through the SRS just because I like what it does to the sound, spreads it a little bit. That's one of the spreaders that I use, like things to make things wider and move about in a track. Another kind of way to spread, I've got the Cooper Time Cube from UAD set up here with really very, very short delays. So I have this spread left and right. And uh, I don't think I've got that going through the SRS. No, it's just in the mix. I'm not thinking anything. I'm not thinking any end goal, except I want to be interested. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just gonna duplicate this track and let's see what I can do here. I'm just going to try moving this. First, I'm going to duplicate the track so I don't lose where it's at. Um, and then I'm going to move it forward a little bit. Um, I don't know, let's say, let's start with 20 milliseconds. That's five millisecond steps I'm set up for here in my template. one another 20. How fun is this? All you people with home studios in the box, you can do this at home and, and um, you know, just have fun and play with building blocks all day and see where it goes. And if they fall down, you just pick them up, you go back, you keep saving sessions, you don't lose anything. I'm so heavily entrenched in doing things this way. I don't have, I have no reason to, to want to go back to the analog days and tape and all that. I, I had more trouble than I want, care to remember with tape. Since I started working in Pro Tools, my thoughts were you got to get into this because this is where it's gonna go and now i love it to the point where I, I mean i can't believe i'm at home i'm playing around with somebody's music i'm free to do whatever i want and pick up the pieces later if it doesn't work quickly i can save it i can change it i mean it's it's fantastic and the sound is to my ear is great i'm reasonably confident i've got this to a place where I could be very close to finished, and I'd like to share it with um, Erlian and the other guys to listen to, and because it's quite a radical 
change from what um, they did. So it might be good for me to print something now and see what they think.